Welcome to the part 3 of the Android Flash tutorials. In this video, we'll be seeing the basics of post request in Flask. So first, we'll be seeing how to make a post request in the Android Studio. Next, we'll be seeing how to make the Flask server handle post requests. So finally, to conclude it off, we'll be making a server-sided number adder app where numbers are going to be added in the server and the result is going to be displayed in the text view of your Android app. So let's get started. So the only difference between a GET request and POST request uh, is that in the POST request you will be sending some information to the server and the server can change some resources or it can process that information and send you something based on the information that you send. So for that you will be sending uh, the information through parameters. So the parameters are identified by a parameter name and parameter value. So let's make the parameters. To build the parameters, we build the parameters through something called as request body. So let's call the request body. Request body. Uh, let's say form body equals new form body dot builder form body dot builder and then dot add so we add our parameter names and the parameter value here so you can add as many number of parameters you want so we can add two parameters and say dot build so this is the way you send information to the server. So now let's make a POST request to the Flask server and let the Flask server send us the information that you have sent. So it's going to return whatever you send it. So let's delete one parameter. Let's say value and let's say please repeat this. And then inside your request, you'll have to put this form body. So you say dot URL dot post of form body. So now your Android app is ready to send post request to your Flash server. So now let's make some changes in the Flash server so it can handle post request. So let's make another method. Let's say post let's change this as hello post and so we need to receive this parameter so how we receive the parameter is we define a variable name let's call it as value equals request dot form and then in square brackets we give the parameter name so here we have given a parameter name as value so when you give the parameter name as value this is going to be fetched uh, this is going to be fetched and is given to the server so let's give the value so that's it so we can just say return value so we have one more thing We need to also import this request. So we say from flask import request. So we are done. Let's try running this app. Python app.py. So our app is running. Let's send a post request to post. So let's change from sum to post. Let's try running this app. So, for making a number adder app, you'll have to send two parameters. The Flask server is going to receive those two parameters. Oh, we got some error. The method is not allowed for the requested URL. Okay, so yeah. We'll also have to add method. Uh, so, to make this method allow post request, 
you will have to say that explicitly mention that you will have to accept post request you do that by saying comma methods equals post now let's try running this app please repeat this has been printed here now let's try changing this let's just say flask is sending receiving the post request and is sending you back so let's try running this app so it should tell the same again so we have a successful post request that's been sent to the flask server and the flask server is trying to repeat the same thing that you have sent it so now using the same knowledge let's try building a number adder app so for that you'll have to make some changes here let's just change this parameter value to number 1 and number 2 so yeah so before this so let's try making two numbers input and then let's have a button and let's finally whenever you try to click the button Uh, the text you will show the number added so let's try to make that layout now so two very boring minutes later so now let's define these edit text in your java program So first let's define the button Then let's add a button listener for this Then finally on the click of the button you should get the numbers from the edit text one and edit text two So let's say edit text num1 is equals to uh, dot id dot one. Let's do the same with number two and r dot id dot two. So we'll be sending both. So let's take this entire piece of code and let's make it execute. after the button is clicked so it should be right after this so we need to say string value 1 equals num1 dot get text for two string string value 2 equals num2 dot get text of two string so now let's have an if condition saying if value 1 is not equal to null and value 2 is not equal to null and we are done so let's have these values inside the post request so you'll be sending value 1 value 2 so our post request our android part is completely done let's define a sum function let's just call it sum and let's say hello sum so we'll be having two values so it's going to be num1 and num2 right so let's have num1 
so let's get the input in integer and say value to equals int of request dot form num2 all we have to do is return str of value 1 plus value 2 so let's try running the android app and the oh we need to change the path to sum right so let's try running the android app and the flask app as well android app is running flask app is running now let's say the number one is 10 number two is 20 let's click on calculate it just shows 30 but then our app is crashing let's see why the app is crashing finally we'll have to make one change so whenever the text view is displaying this has to run in the ui thread so this whole thing since it's an async task is running in a separate thread but you can't do any ui changes in a thread that is not on ui thread so we'll have to run it on ui thread so to run it on ui thread you just say run on ui thread and in brackets you say new runnable so we'll just update this here Declare it final. Fine. And we need to surround it by try and catch block. So let's see if it's working right now. So let's go to the Android app. Let's say 10, 20, and let's try to calculate. It shows 30. So let's try to make it a big number. So it should say 348744. So this way you could actually do all the computations on the server side and you can use this to run also run Python scripts for your Android app. So if you want to do any machine learning in your Android app, TensorFlow Lite is there, but still you could use server sided scripts to actually run python programs so in the next video i'll be showing you how to make a really cool wikipedia search app in android using the post request of flask so that's it guys thanks for watching subscribe for more content peace